On a little farm lived a cute duck family. Mummy duck was sitting on her eggs waiting for her new ducklings to hatch. There were exactly seven eggs that were waiting to hatch. One sunny morning, the eggs began to hatch. Soon after, with great joy, the six little ducklings began to hatch. The ducklings were trying to adapt to the new world. They were quacking and walking around Mother Duck. However, the largest egg of them all was still trying to hatch and Mother Duck began to worry. She thought that there might be something wrong. She decided to wait a little while longer. And at last, the seventh and the largest egg hatched. With great confusion, the poor ducklings began to look around. Little did he know his mother and siblings were a bit more confused than he was. Because this duck, in particular, did not look like his siblings. He was built much more broader and had grey and white feathers. The other ducklings began to laugh at him. What an ugly duckling you are! You look nothing like us! I don't get it. How come you look nothing like your siblings? Some time later, the ducklings all grew older. But the ugly duckling was much bigger than the others, even the colour of his feathers. You grew up so fast. How did you turn out to be so different? Time was passing by and the ugly duckling was growing up to be a different and sad duck. None of his siblings wanted to play with him. We won't play with you because you're ugly. All the other animals on the farm were making fun of him. <coughs> ugly duckling, ugly duckling. Na, 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 ugly ducking, ugly ducking. Mother Duck, on the other hand, was doing her best in protecting him. My poor duckling, why are you so different than the others? As the days passed, the poor ugly duckling was feeling horrible. All night long he would silently cry and think to himself that no one would ever want him. so ugly. Why couldn't I turn out to be like my siblings? One day, some hunters approached the lake near where they lived. The hunters began to hunt the ducks they had seen. Whilst Mother Duck was looking for food for the ducklings, she was caught by the hunters. The poor duckling, not knowing what had been happening, he waited till morning for his mother to return. Poor duckling didn't know what to do. First he went next to the dog, and the dog told him to go. Go away! No one should see me talking to an ugly duck like you. A while later, he went next to the chicken, but the chicken also made fun of him. Even I'm better looking than you. <coughs> ugly duckling was very sad. No one wants me here. If my mother isn't coming back, there's absolutely no reason for me to stay on this farm. That morning, the ugly duckling left the farm. He swam to the other side of the lake. He asked the same question to all the animals he bumped into along the way. Do you know of any duck that looks like me? Do you know of any ducks that look like me? Do you know of any ducks that look like me? He received the same answer from all of them. They had never seen such ugly duck before. Poor Duckling began his journey and reached another lake once he was there. He asked the same question to the geese. 
You mustn't stay here like this. There are hunters around. Quickly get away from here. Go on, now go. The ugly duckling began to move along. Soon after another lake appeared. This time he was all alone. There was no one to be seen. Well then, if nobody wants me, I will hide here forever. Even though he was all alone, he was very happy. One day, he saw a horde of white long-necked birds migrating to the south. He looked at them with admiration. How beautiful they are! I wish I could be like them! Winter had come and snow had begun to fall. The ugly duckling fell in love with the sight of his first ever snow. Playing around, he was covered in white snow. Due to the heavy snow, the ugly duckling was finding it hard to find food. So off he went walking around trying to find food. He was cold and tired. Meanwhile, he came across a farmer. The farmer felt sorry for him and gave his jacket. You poor thing, how cold you are. I will take you home and look after you until you grow. The farmer did as he said and took good care of him. When spring had arrived, the ugly duckling had grown. So that he would have free space to move around, the farmer decided to leave him in a lake. All alone once again, after some time had passed, the ugly duckling looked at his reflection in the water. But he was amazed at what he saw. At first, he couldn't recognize himself. He thought there was someone else behind him. So he flipped his wings and noticed that his reflection was doing the same thing. He stretched out his neck and his reflection continued to copy his movements. Right then he knew that this amazing bird was no one other than himself. Oh, how much I've changed. I look like the birds in the sky. I must return back home and show myself at once. And off he went. While he was swimming in the lake, he came across a wedge of swans. Because he was one of them now, they took him along. Ugly Duckling was travelling in joy with the swans. A boy at the lake shore yelled out to his friends when he saw the swans. Hey, look at the young one! All the way back! Must be the most beautiful swan I've seen! Yes, from the beginning, he indeed was a swan. He was just an unfortunate egg which got mixed up in between the ducks. But now he was with his real family, and ahead of him was a happy life. Once upon a time, in a little cottage in the woods, lived a mother goat and her little goats leading a happy life. The little goats were very cute, they all were like toys. Mother goat, like all mothers, loved her little goats very much. She protected them from all the wild animals in the forest. One day, before she left the house to find food in the forest, she called her little goats next to her and... My dear children, I am going into the forest. Do not open the door for anyone. If the wolf comes into the house, he will eat all of us alive. He's very shifty. He will disguise himself into different shapes and try to fool you. So how will we recognize him? The wolf has a rough voice and I have a soft and sweet voice. So you can recognize him from his low and rough voice right away. 
Right when she was leaving, the mother goat remembered something else. She turned to her little goats. Ah, one more thing. The wolf's feet are black and mine are white. You can also recognize him from his feet. Don't worry, mother. We can protect ourselves. You can count on us. Mother goat kissed her little goats one by one and headed into the woods. The wolf was watching them from afar. When he saw mother goat leaving, he waited a while. And then he came in front of the cottage and knocked on the door. Who is it? Little goats, open the door. Your mother is here. I brought nice food for you all. But the little goats recognized the wolf's rough voice right away. Without opening the door, they yelled out. You're not our mother. Her voice is sweet and more beautiful. You're the wolf. You can't fool us. The wolf got very angry because he could not fool the little goats. So he went to the shop, bought a big piece of chalk and ate it. Now his voice sounded much softer. So he went back to the cottage and knocked on the door again. This time the wolf started to talk with his soft voice. My little goats, open the door, it's your mother. I brought food from the forest for all of you. Hearing the wolf's soft voice, the little goats thought that it was really their mother this time. Just when they were about to open the door, one of them shouted. Wait, wait, let's look at the feet from underneath the door. Of course, when the little goats looked from underneath the door, they saw the wolf's black feet. So they yelled again without opening the door. We will not open the door for you. Our mother's feet are not black. They are white. You're the wolf. As furious as he was, the wolf left. This time, he went to the bakery. When the baker saw the wolf in front of him, he was very surprised. I'm a vegetarian now, so I will eat pastry from now on. Could you give me some flour? The wolf came out of the bakery with a little sack of flour. When he got near the cottage, he opened the sack and poured all the flour on his feet. Now his feet were all white. The shifty wolf knocked on the door for the third time. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I have brought food for all of you from the forest. First show us your feet so we know it's you, mother. The wolf showed them his feet with flour. When the little goats saw the white feet, they believed that it was their mother and opened the door. And what did they see? The wolf was standing right there in front of them. The little goats did not know what to do. They started to run around yelling. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I will catch all of you. One of the little goats went under the desk. The second one into the bed. The third one into the chimney. Fourth kid hid in the kitchen. The fifth one got into the closet. The sixth hid behind the curtain. And the seventh kid went into the giant clock on the wall. But the shifty wolf was quick, and one by one he caught them all from wherever they were hiding. Run! Run! Come here! Don't run! I will catch you all! I said stop! The only one he could not find was the one hiding in the clock. He was already full, so he gave up on looking for them and head out. There was a big yard a little further from the cottage. The wolf lay under a tree on the yard and started to sleep, snoring. Short while after, the mother goat returned home. When she saw the door open, she knew something bad had happened and started to scream. When she entered the house, she was shocked. 
The tables and chairs were all upside down. Curtains were torn. The beds were all messed up. The pillows and sheets were all on the floor. Mother goat looked for her little goats but could not find them anywhere. She started to yell out their names one by one, but not one answered. Finally, it was time to call the last one's name. Only then she heard a high-pitched voice. I'm inside the grandpa clock, mummy! Mother Goat ran to the grandpa clock and took her kid out of there. Mother Goat and kid hugged. The little goat started to tell the story, crying. The wolf came in disguise and we thought it was you and opened the door. The wolf ate all my brothers. <laughs> oh, darling. Mother Goat was very upset. She cried for her little goats. With only one of her kids remaining, she walked out and started to go towards the yard. After a while, they saw the wolf sleeping under a tree. He snored so bad that the branches of the tree were shaking. Mother Goat observed the wolf for a while. She realised that inside his tummy, some things were moving. Oh my God! Can it be that my goats are in his tummy and they're still alive? She had a plan. She turned to her kid. Run home, bring me a needle, thread and the scissors. When the little kid was running home, Mother Goat collected six big rocks from the floor. After a while, the little goat came back with a needle, thread and the big scissors. Mother Goat cut open the wolf with the scissors. She saw one of her little goats right away. And then the other ones started to appear one by one. They were all healthy. Mother Goat couldn't stay still from the joy she had. All the little goats hugged their mothers with joy. Mama, Mama, we love you! They were all full of joy. Ah, oh, my little goats, you're safe. Mother goat put the rocks she collected carefully inside the wolf. Then she stitched his tummy with the needle and thread. The wolf was sleeping so deep he'd not feel anything. He did not move. Mother goat and her little goats quickly got away. When the wolf woke up, he stood up. His tummy hurt really bad. He thought to himself that it was because he ate too many goats. Because his tummy was full of rocks, he got really thirsty. He came next to the river to drink some water. But when he was walking, the rocks were hitting each other. My tummy feels so heavy and full. It's as if all the goats I ate turned into rocks. He wanted to kneel down and drink some water. Due to the rocks being so heavy, he lost his balance and slipped into the water. Oh, help! Help me! I'm drowning! Help! Yelled out for help, but no one helped him. He could not bear the weight of the rocks anymore and went under into deep waters. When they saw what happened, Mother Goat and her little goats ran to the river. The wolf is dead! Yippee! The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! Yippee! Hand in hand, they all started to dance and jump around. From that day on, Mother Goat and her seven little goats had a peaceful and happy life in their cottage in the forest.